Hello everyone, this is the introduction to module one, which is 1D kinematics. And this information is found in chapter two of your textbook. So 1D kinematics is simply motion along a straight line. And well, I should back up. Kinematics is the study of motion without worrying about what the causes of that motion are. We'll get to that later in chapter four. So 1D kinematics is the study of motion and there are lots of times when this happens in real life. So the answer to that question on the screen is absolutely yes. So this happens when you're driving your car, when you're walking down the hallway, um, a golf ball going into a hole, a um, sprinter doing the 100 meter sprint. Um, when you're driving your car, yeah, there's lots of curvy roads. Um, but there are also lots of straight roads, so there's plenty of times when you're in a straight path for a while, such as on this straightaway, and then you change direction, but now you're doing one-dimensional motion again. Um, sometimes birds are, are soaring through the air in a, in a straight path, or for example, geese uh, fly south for the winter, and so that can be modeled as 1D kinematics, even though, you know, maybe they're not flying perfectly straight, we could still model their journey as they go um, from, say, Canada down to Florida. I don't know where geese live in the winter. Um, but anyway, we could still model that trip. We could figure out how long it would take them and uh, their average speed or whatever it is that we were interested in. So 1D kinematics is something that's happening all the time. And it's important that we understand 1D kinematics before we try to take on 2D kinematics because yeah there's a lot of uh, motion that is two-dimensional motion and well three-dimensional motion but we won't get to that in this course but the fundamental is first understanding the kinematics concepts and that's what we're going to do in module one which is covering the conceptual part of chapter two and then in module two we're going to get into using equations um, to be able to solve for the various quantities in a 1D kinematic situation. So in every module at the beginning in the, on the overview page, you will see these learning objectives. Okay, not these learning objectives, but you will see whatever the learning objectives are for that module. And here you can see what they are for module one. And these are important. You should look at these, well, not I mean, I think it's worth reading through them. Don't obsess over them when you're on the overview page. But then at the end of the module, go back to that overview page. Take a look at the objectives because this is what you're going to get assessed on. This is what we want you to know. This is what we want you to be able to do at the end of a module. And so your quizzes and your exams are going to be a lot better off if you've gone through each of these and you're able to do those. So... For example, can you explain the difference between speed and velocity? Could you explain the difference between velocity and acceleration? And I picked those out, not because those are more important than the other ones, but because those are some common misconceptions that students have and or some difficulties that students have in getting things to... In, um, they're, they're particularly difficult concepts for some students. Um, another one that I didn't um, call out here is just understanding acceleration, not just in the sense of speeding up, but acceleration as defined in physics is speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction. In other words, the rate of change of velocity. So anytime the velocity changes, that is an acceleration. And so overcoming our preconceived notions about things is, is always a challenge. Another thing that can be um, easier for some students than others is dealing with graphs. And so we're going to take a look at a couple of graphs in this video and see how that relates to some of these ideas. And then you're going to explore it in more depth, but I just thought I'd give a quick overview here and give you some introduction. All right, this is the Moving Man simulation, which is found on the FET site, P-H-E-T, of the University of Colorado. And so we have a little guy here, and we can say he's starting at zero meters, and we're going to give him a velocity of two meters per second. 
and zero acceleration, which means he's going to have a constant velocity once I hit this play button. There we go. We'll stop him there. I'm going to change his velocity to zero now. He's just past the five meter mark. So now he has a zero velocity. And that's not very interesting. But I'll pause him again. Now I'm going to change his velocity to negative two. And hit play again. And I'm going to let him go past where he was when he started. And stop him play there. All right, so there's a few features of this graph I'll point out. One is that here he had a constant speed, but his position was changing. So we have to really be careful to look at the axis um, as far as what it says. And I think it, it looks like it's cut off. So down here you can't see a label for the horizontal axis. It says 20 seconds. So this is the time axis. Okay, so along here is the time axis, but this graph has position as its vertical axis, whereas this one is velocity and this other one is acceleration. It's really important that you read what's on the vertical axis when you're trying to interpret a graph or trying to create a graph if you're asked to sketch it in. So here the position is changing but the velocity is constant. Okay, so he was moving forward at two meters per second. So that was constant, but this was changing. Okay, and since he had a constant velocity, the acceleration was zero. In fact, the acceleration is zero the whole time because I was always putting in constant velocities in here. The only time when you see a blip on the acceleration is when the velocity changed. And it may not be realistic um, because he had a, a very abrupt change from going two meters per second and then I paused it and I said okay now you're now you're stationary and then I paused it again and said oh you're not stationary more, anymore now you're going two meters per second the other way and so that's why you see a rather large value for acceleration all right uh, the other thing is we can we can also talk about the difference between speed and velocity here so here he had a speed of two meters per second and here he also had a speed of two meters per second. In other words he walked to the right at two meters per second that was the rate at which his position was changing and then when he was going to the left he was walking at that same rate and the reason being is because that's the numbers I put in here. I entered in two and then zero and then negative two. So his speed was the same for this motion and this motion but his velocity was different because velocity involves the direction, which we can signify with a word like left or right or with a sign like positive and negative. All right, so those are just a few of those terms. You're going to see this moving man simulation again in a lab, and you'll get more experience understanding these terms, so don't, don't worry if you don't understand it all yet. Just getting our feet wet right here.